Hey guys, so today I wanted to share my 10 best purchases of the year so far. I figured since we're about halfway through the year, I mean we're a little more than halfway through the year now, but it felt like a good time to look through my collection and see what are the products that I'm really happy that I spent my money on this year. Now I don't necessarily have something for each category of makeup. There's some categories like blush where I have more than one, <laughs> so you know it's just a little bit all over the place. I also have two sunscreens in here, which I kind of count sunscreens as makeup because they're such an important part of my makeup routine, even though they're not technically makeup. So this one would have to be in like my top, top picks for the year. This is the Revolution Fix and Glow Dewy Finish Fixing Spray. As you can see, I did purchase this earlier this year. I'm already close to halfway done with it. This is one of my favorite setting sprays I've ever used. So it is a glowy setting spray, but it's not tacky or oily at all. So I used to love the Pixi Glow Mist back when I had even drier skin than I do now, but after a while that one kind of got to be just a little bit too oily for me. This one is perfect if you have really any skin type because it definitely is glowy, but not in a tacky way. In fact, I'm going to put some on right now because I don't have any on yet. So refreshing. It smells so good. It's probably unnecessary to apply today because I'm already very glowy. We're actually having a heat wave here in Seattle. By heat wave, it's like 90 degrees, which I know that isn't that hot for a lot of the world, but here in Seattle, most people don't have AC, so it's definitely, it's a toasty one, but we're making it through. But that being said, I am already quite glowy as it is today, so I uh, might not have needed any additional glow. You can actually see it does have some sort of glowy, like really, really fine shimmer particles in there. It's not glitter or anything, like it's so fine that, that they're not really like detectable particles, but you can kind of see, see what I mean? They're kind of swirling around in there. When you spray it on, it doesn't give your face like a metallic sheen or anything. It just gives your face the most beautiful, like natural looking glow without feeling sticky or tacky. So great glowy setting spray for any skin type if you're looking for one. Also the mister on it, at least on mine. You know, some brands misters can be really hit or miss, but the one I have works great. It gives a nice even mist and it also smells incredible. Now if you don't like a strong scent in your products, you probably want to skip this one. I normally don't want my products to be super scented, but the scent, it's just, it like brings me back to the 90s or something. Something about this scent like is very nostalgic for me. Like it takes me back to my childhood in a really good way. So highly, highly recommend. I feel like no one talks about this, but it's, it's amazing. Okay, so I do have not one, not two, but three blushes. I was gonna have more, but I forced myself to narrow it down. So I guess you could say 2022 is like the year of blush for me because I've been on a blush kick. I mean, I've always loved blush, but this year I've discovered some really good ones. So the first one that I am so happy that I purchased this year was the Milani Cheek Kiss Cream Blush in the shade Nude Kiss. I know Milani is really well known for their liquid Cheek Kiss Cream Blushes. I don't hear quite as much about these in the compact, but this is incredible. One of my favorite cream blushes I've ever tried. Now it is more of a like hydrating formula. It's not like the, for example, the LYS Cream Blush that does kind of set down to a satin matte finish. This does stay dewy on your cheeks. It is going to stay a little bit tacky feeling so just keep that in mind I know that's not everyone's cup of tea but I love it and there's something about this blush that makes my cheeks look so juicy and smooth it almost it doesn't fill in the pores necessarily but it just kind of makes my cheeks look very glassy and plump and smoother when I'm wearing this the shade I will give you a word of caution the shade nude kiss is a lot more pink in real life than it looks online. I bought it thinking it was going to be more of like a brownish mauve rose color, but it's actually more pink. So that's what that looks like. This is not what I'm wearing on my cheeks today, but for all these products I will link below videos where I did apply them to my face so you can see them in action if you want. But I am actually also working on a one week one palette with my BH Cosmetics Mimosa palette, so I wasn't able to film demos of these products today. But what you're seeing here, this is a more accurate uh, representation of what the color looks like in real life. Just be aware of that. Maybe be sure to look up swatches rather than going off of what they look like on Ulta's website or something, but so easy to use. I just tap it on with my fingers. It's not too pigmented to where you have to be really careful with it. It's not fully opaque, which I think is a good thing for a cream blush because you can kind of build it up to your desired intensity and just 
it's really flexible and easy to work with. So I love that. I was going to include also my Tower 28 cream blush, but I had to narrow it down. And honestly, I like the Milani one just as much, and it is like half the price of the Tower 28. So not necessarily exact dupes because the shades are different, but formula-wise, very similar. So highly recommend that Milani cream blush. I really, again, I don't know why more people aren't talking about this either. So a couple of powder blushes that I bought this year that I'm loving, also both drugstore. First up is the Flower Beauty Flower Pots blush in the shade Sweet Pea. Beautiful, soft, baby pink color, a little bit more of a cool toned pink than um, a lot of what I have in my collection. And so these have been out for a while, but I finally got around to trying it this year and I'm so glad I finally did. This is such a soft formula, like just to the touch, it just feels so smooth and like creamy, even though it's a powder. Um, it goes on so easily, blends like a dream. This shade is perfect for fair skin. You don't have to worry about over applying it because it's already such a light color to begin with. So that is another one that I'm so glad I purchased this year. And then the third blush is from Essence. This is the most affordable one that I'm gonna be talking about today. This is their The Blush in the shade Befitting. Another great matte powder blush. And I've already worn away quite a bit of the imprint there in the middle, so I think that that goes to show just how much I've already used it this year, but this is a great nude, kind of brownish rose color. This is more kind of what I was expecting the color of the Milani cream blush to look like. Of course, this is a cream and this is a powder, but this is kind of what I was expecting to get from the Milani one. So I'm glad to now have that more taupey rose color that I was after too. This shade out of the three, I think is the most everyday kind of shade. This will go with any look you could possibly think of. It's just that perfect kind of nude, soft rose color. And this one is even more affordable than the other two at $4. I still can't believe the price on that. So nice to have a brand like Essence that still is offering like truly affordable prices because drugstore prices, as we know, have gotten up there these days. So highly recommend all three of those. I, I really, I can't pick a favorite. I'm just now realizing most of these top 10 purchases are drugstore. This first half of the year, I really haven't been buying a whole lot of makeup as it is. And most of my makeup shopping has been drugstore. Although I do have a couple of high-end favorites in the lip category that we'll get to. So speaking of flower and essence, I actually have another couple of favorites from them this year, both of which are palettes. But first up, I have the Flower Desert Lights palette. So this I actually held off on purchasing for so long. It came out last year, and when it came out, it totally had my attention. But I kept talking myself out of it because I thought, well, those look like such basic shades and kind of looks like the shades might overlap with one another too much. But I finally couldn't talk myself out of it any longer and I bought it earlier this year. And I'm so glad I did because in person it really is stunning and all six of the shades really are different from one another. There's not too much overlap and yes, they are kind of basic neutral shades, but that's kind of what I love about it so much because Let's say I just want to do a quick one and done shadow look, but I still want my eyeshadow to look like blingy and foiled. I, you know, I love super shimmery shadows. I can just dip into any of these shades and create a beautiful dimensional look with just one shadow. I also like to pair it with other palettes in my collection. Sometimes I'll just throw a few mattes in the crease and then pop literally any of these shades on my lid and I've got a beautifully put together look. I used this on my friend for her wedding, I used it on myself as a bridesmaid, and also even though the shades look pretty basic, they're really not. I mean, they have so much dimension to them, they're so much more foiled than most other shadows in my collection because they're kind of like a cream to powder sort of feel, kind of feel similar to a ColourPop Super Shock shadow, but like this shade for example, that's the bottom middle shade called Sahara. That is such a stunning color. I mean, just look at how dimensional that shade is. I Yeah, I cannot get enough of this palette. So glad I finally bought it. I should have bought it sooner, but glad to have it now. And then the other palette, this is another one that I was late to the party on. This also launched last year and I didn't buy it till this year, but that's kind of the story of my life. But this is the Essence Coral Me Maybe palette. I still can't get over the price of these. These little Essence six pans retail for $4, which I still cannot get over. You really can't beat that price tag, but Coral Me Maybe, as you can see, is a very kind of peachy coral, but I would say kind of a neutral take on peaches and corals. Like, I also have, for example, my BH Cosmetics Mimosa palette, which I'm wearing today. This is very corally, but I definitely wouldn't describe it as neutral. <laughs> but this is like if you want to dip your toe into peachy eyeshadows, but you still want to stay within the realm of kind of everyday neutral shades. 
this is a great palette to check out. And all six of these shadows perform beautifully. I've had no issues with them. They're all pigmented. The mattes are very blendable. They're very soft and smooth. Um, the shimmers also, I like to just apply those shimmers with a finger, but my favorite shimmer I think is this one here called Pennies and Dimes. This is kind of like a bronzy coral shade. That's what that looks like. Yeah, kind of like a copper penny kind of color. That makes a great one and done shadow. And I just love how easy it is to pull together a look with this little guy. So I don't want to set anyone's expectations too high. I mean, it is a $4 palette. So it's not like Essence is over here revolutionizing and reinventing the wheel when it comes to eyeshadows. They're all pretty basic, but they perform well. I have liked every look I've done with it. And it's just an easy palette to work with. This would be a great kind of beginner friendly palette or just one to kind of keep in your makeup bag for on the go. It's it's fantastic. And it also smells like sugar cookies. So, you know, bonus there. So I do have a couple of lip products that I am really glad I purchased this year. One was another one that I had on my wish list for a long time. And I think that's a common theme here. Not all of these were on my wish list for that long, but I have noticed that when I do keep a product on my wish list for a long time, really think about it. Oftentimes when I do finally purchase it, if I do decide to purchase it, I end up loving it. So this is the Bite lip crayon in the shade Stinger. Unfortunately, Bite is going out of business this year, which was really sad news, but this was a Bite product that I'd had on my wish list for a long time, and so their kind of closeout sale was the push I needed to finally grab it. This is, um, it, I think it was on sale for like $12, so I basically got it for a drugstore price, and I'm so happy I bought it. This is such a beautiful reddish coral color. I think they call it like an electric coral, and I think that's a great name for it. Um, you might remember one of my favorite lip colors of all time was the Physicians Formula Healthy Lip in Tulip Treatment, and I was kind of on the hunt for a dupe for that. This isn't an exact dupe. I do have a side-by-side -side picture that I can try to find that I can put on the screen comparing this to that product, but to me this is just like a slightly lighter version. Like, the color is literally just a lighter version of Physicians Formula Tulip Treatment. I actually kind of like it better, and I do like the format of this a little bit better. It does still go on pretty much matte, but um, I do prefer this format over a liquid lipstick these days. It's just very comfortable. It stays on well. I can definitely see why so many people loved these Bite Lip Crayons. And it's unfortunate that they are going out of business. But I've been loving this this summer and I'm excited to keep getting use out of it this summer. And then another lip product that was on my wish list for a long time and I did hold off for a sale and finally grabbed it. This is the Tower 28. Uh, what do they call this? The Shine On Lip Jelly in the shade Pistachio. And I believe this is one of their milky lip jellies. So this is the shade Pistachio, which is actually one of their new shades this year. But it really is like this beautiful milky nude pink color. I gave like a full review on this in my most recent speed reviews video, if you want more info on it and to see, um, to see how it applies and everything. But I love the texture of these Tower 28 glosses. They have kind of like a gel sort of feel to them, so I think the name is appropriate. So it has a nice thickness to it without being sticky and also without being too like oily runny. It stays on nicely, gives your lips kind of like a glassy shine. So really glad I finally got that. And Tower 28 is kind of, I would describe them as kind of like a mid-range brand. They are sold at Sephora, but I think their lip glosses are $15 and their blushes are around $20. So Really not a bad price for a Sephora brand. And then my last two for my top 10 purchases of the year so far are both sunscreens. So the first one is actually one that I already used up. I do plan to repurchase it soon because I really miss having it, but the Everyday by Unsun SPF 30 mineral sunscreen. It's a tinted mineral sunscreen and it is matte. I fell in love with matte sunscreens this year and that is my favorite of all of the matte mineral tinted sunscreens that I've tried, especially for the price. It is one of the most affordable ones that I've found, and it's a good value, and it's a black-owned brand, so I highly recommend checking it out. It does come in two shades. I wear the shade light to medium, and then it also comes in a medium to deep. That sunscreen underneath a glowy foundation, like for example, my favorite combo is that sunscreen under the Ilia Skin Tint. Beautiful combination. They kind of balance each other out perfectly, so you get all the benefits of like a matte primer, but also you still get the glow from the foundation. So can't wait to get that back in my life. Uh, I do plan to repurchase it soon. And then my other favorite, of course, this was my winner from my sunscreen roundup this year. I believe the Unsun was my number two. This was my number one. I will leave my sunscreen roundup linked below if you want to see these applied and everything and how they compare to other sunscreens. But I also, of course, had to mention the Pipette SPF 50 mineral sunscreen. This sunscreen wins in so many different 
categories, so it is an amazing value, first of all. It retails for about $12 at most places, and it comes with four fluid ounces, which is massive. They don't specify that it's for face or body. You can really use it for either one, but I love it for the face. That's the only way that I use it. It's very hydrating. It wears well under makeup. This is what I'm wearing today. Um, I do keep having to powder my face, but that's because I keep sweating, but it wears really well under makeup. Now, I will say this is probably best. The Unsun one is great really for all skin types. I mean, I have kind of combo to dry skin and I love that one, but um, this one I would recommend more to dry skin types or if you just like a dewy, glowy sunscreen because it is definitely glowy. It's not going to set down to a matte finish like the Unsun one, for example. It does stay glowy and tacky on your skin, which I don't mind, but I know a lot of people might not prefer that. But for an amazing value, and it is a high SPF as well, I just cannot recommend it highly enough if you're on the hunt for a good glowy mineral sunscreen for the face or for the body. But yeah, had to recommend that, and I thank you so much to those of you who recommended this to me because I was hesitant to try it. I just, for some reason, I didn't think I would like it because I, you know, I am picky with mineral sunscreens. It's hard to formulate a good mineral sunscreen. A lot of them suck, but this one really took me by surprise, and I love it, and I especially love the price tag. But even regardless of the price, like, I'm not just saying it's good for the price, because to me, this rivals the Kapari Antioxidant Face Shield with SPF 30 that I also love. But that one is pricey, but to me, this one is just as good, and it has an, an even higher SPF. So those are my top 10 purchases so far of 2022. Excited to see what other discoveries I come up with before the end of the year, and then of course we'll have our end of the year best of 2022 video, but yeah, it's always nice to kind of reflect on the purchases that you really ended up loving and what was it about those purchases that made them so great. Some of these were definitely kind of more spur of the moment purchases like the Essence Palette or the Revolution Setting Spray and then others I really thought about for a long time but but I would love to hear down below what have been your favorite makeup purchases of the year so far or sunscreen, skincare, any beauty related purchases. Love to hear about that down below. But if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up so that lets YouTube know that you enjoyed it. And subscribe to my channel if you've not already. I'd love to see you again soon. Hopefully I will talk to you very soon in my next video. Bye!